Hello from the Mashpee TV Channel 99 studio. I'm Talia Landry, a Mashpee resident and staff member of Mashpee TV. I'll be the moderator of today's Mashpee TV 2019 Water District Commission Forum. Joining me as co-moderator is Hannah Schuster from the Mashpee Enterprise. The forum is an opportunity for the candidates to speak to Mashpee voters. The questions we'll be asking were submitted by the community members, including parents, students, and the news media. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement, two minutes to address each question, as well as one minute response to answer any follow-up questions. Each candidate will also have three minutes for a closing statement. The candidate's position on the stage and the order in which they will be addressed was determined through random selection. The candidates have been provided the rules prior to this forum, and we'll get to the first question shortly, but first, let's meet the candidates. And we have Don Myers here with us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. And Tom Fudala. Good to be here. Thank you guys both for being here. And each candidate has two minutes for their opening statement. And we will start with Don. Thank you. So I decided to run for the Water District Commission because I feel that it's important that there be strong physical oversight, transparency, and accountability in our water district, just as with in the rest of our town uh, operations. I believe that we shouldn't read about what's going on in the water district in the newspaper, that we should be receiving communication from the water district so that we're not questioning, well, what was that really about? Um, and even if it turns out that it may not be um, that big of deal, but I think the water district owes it to each of us um, to be able to communicate effectively with us. As a wise steward of our funds, the water district kind of operates out of sight, out of mind. Um, there's not a lot of um, media participation, not a lot of reporting that takes place ab about it, and so people don't really know what's going on. The other part is I want to see the water district be able to expand to cover uh, those individuals whose homes are in Mashpee that aren't currently on the water district. Everyone should have the same opportunity. And also, being a member of the school committee, it's an excellent opportunity to leverage our schools, continue to leverage our schools and enhance our schools so that children start at a very early age knowing how important this resource is. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And Tom? Um, well, obviously, I think the Water District has been very, very, very uh, uh, transparent. Uh, course we're in one business we don't do a lot of different things people uh, get their water out of the tap every day and they can be assured that it's the highest quality water in the state um, I've been working on water supply and water quality in Mashpee for 35 years uh, I started with the town in 1984 as a town planner my first duties were uh, on the water quality advisory committee uh, we developed regulations to protect water supplies and on the water supply committee which was actually the predecessor uh, that created the water district itself. I actually selected the well sites, uh, went out in the field with the hydrology engineer to, uh, to determine whether they were feasible, and um, again, worked on the creation of the water district. So I've been involved in water for 35 years from Ashby. And uh, aside from the water park, as town planner, of course, uh, worked on preserving over 4,000 acres of open space, much of them that's in original, originally was the uh, protect water quality supplies. Um, nine years on the water district, I have been uh, very conservative fiscally. Uh, I developed the district's abatement policy. They actually call it the Fudala formula now as to what, how, what people get when they look for an abatement. Uh, I pushed for them covering their OPEB funding, which they've been doing for the last five years to make sure that uh, people that retire get their, get their benefits and uh, you don't have the kind of situation you have in 
a lot of other bigger cities, and we've been very conservative in our budgeting. Our, unlike the town and other entities, our budget has decreased by 1% this year. Uh, I'm familiar with all the facilities of the district. I've been to all of them. I know how they work. I know how the district works. And uh, very proud that the district received the DEP's 2019 Public Water System Award because of our good work in terms of uh, protecting the town from um, the PFAS contamination that people read about and got scared about in the uh, misrepresented in the Boston Globe. And I've got more to say, but I'll say that later. All right. Thank you, Tom. And we'll actually get into the first question. Um, what do you see the what is the Mashpee Water District and what is your role as a commissioner? And we could start with you, Tom. Well, the Mashpee Water District obviously is the utility that provides water for Mashpee. Uh, when we originally created it, it didn't cover the whole town. Uh, there was a separate private water company called the Highwood Water Company that uh, uh, covered New Seabury and the New, Se New Seabury Shopping Center, now known as Mashpee Commons, and then uh, uh, Southport tied into that. So we had sort of a gerrymandered uh, district and that was later uh, merged into the Water District. Uh, quite simply, we provide water to everybody that wants it. Uh, in terms of the statement about expanding the system, the system expands when uh, people that want water petition the district. Um, I know that I got water because people on Katuit Road petitioned the district to run water away but there. They went by my house along the way and uh, so I've got water and I'm very happy that I do because it's, uh, like I said, good quality water. So. Uh, we operate, maintain wells, we operate and maintain the distribution system, and uh, we are very careful in terms of the quality of our water. Um, um, the PFAS that you read about in the Globe, the, w the well that they were talking about was shut down two years ago and is uh, close to being um, uh, fixed. Uh, the Air Force, we negotiated with the Air Force to uh, uh, provide carbon filtration for that plant. And uh, it's a, I won't get into it, it was a lousy well in the first place, but that was before my time. And uh, uh, it should go online this summer. Meanwhile, the uh, state has indicated that it may be reducing its standard for PFAS uh, to 20 parts per trillion. And in advance of that, we have taken a second well offline. Uh, but we're pretty sure uh, with water from the uh, cooperative on the base, we should be able to cover our needs for this summer and the future. Thank you. And Don, what would you see your role as being commissioner? So as I mentioned in my opening comments, one of the things that I'm concerned about is communication. Um, getting out there so that people know what is going on uh, with the Mashpee Water District. Understand how to get hooked up. Um, you know, I have friends who live in areas, don't know how to get connected uh, to it. and. So information is um, somewhat available in regard to that on the website, but not a whole lot. And they would just look at it and see um, the $900 plus dollar, um, connection fee and not really understand that there are clearly options in order for that uh, to happen. Um, you know, the water district was set up as a separate legal entity so that it can raise funds independent of the town of Mashpee. And that's important so that your tax dollars as a town person do not go to the water district unless you're actually um, utilizing the service. And so it's, that was why it was originally set up so that the tax rates wouldn't significantly go up as the water system was uh, being built out. That's why um, there's been some discussion in regard to utilizing um, the water district as a vehicle down the road for the build out of uh, a sewer system within Mashpee because it does have its own separate uh, funding. And those are going to be very challenging and um, robust discussions that need to take place to ensure <coughs> that everyone is being um, satisfied uh, in those discussions. Thank you, Don. And we're actually going to start with you again, Don. Can you tell us about why some of the Mashpee wells are offline? Do you know anything about that? 
Sure, as, as Tom mentioned, um, you know, we have a problem or have had historically a problem with um, the firefighting foam that was used at the base, not only during its um, years as an active base, but also from training facilities. And so therefore, that has leached into um, our water systems. That's why it's important for individuals to be on Mashpee water system so that they have someone who is uh, monitoring that on an ongoing basis. The Mashpee Water District uh, does that. If there's any sort of indication that there's issues, wells are taken offline, water is purchased from other sources in order um, to satisfy the need. No one will go thirsty um, here in Mashpee as a result of that. But it's an ongoing um, uh, struggle because you have to keep continuously developing supplies and we're all drawing from the same aquifer. And you know, there's only so much water uh, down there. Thankfully, with all the rainy weather that we've had over the last um, year, maybe it's a little better now, but it's a limited supply and we don't control what goes into that water supply. And Tom? Uh, what was the question again? It <laughs> was. <laughs> <where> <laughs> that went. <laughs> um, can you tell us about why some of the uh, Mashpee wells are offline right now? Oh, they said uh, um, in advance uh, of any orders from the state uh, two, two and a half years ago, um, we got a reading of 70.2 70, 70 uh, parts per trillion of uh, PFAS in the Mashpee Village well. Um, our well number six, and um, we took it offline immediately. And because that exceeded the federal recommendations, it's not even a standard, um, we were able to negotiate with the Air Force, which is clearly the source of the uh, PFAS from the fire training area, um, to actually pay 100% of the cost of fixing that well so that the water will be uh, clean and drinkable. And as I mentioned before, we had a second well uh, taken offline uh, this year because the state indicated that it was considering reducing the standard for PFAS at the state level to 20 parts per trillion. And we had one well that was exceeding that, so we took that offline immediately without any, uh, any uh, probing by the, uh, the DEP. As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons we got the 2019 Best Water System Award for our proactive efforts in terms of PFAS. And um, as far as people hooking up to the system, again, um, there aren't a lot of large parts of town that are not connected. We have over 9,000 customers. Um, but if anybody has any questions, we have the excellent operations manager, Andy Marks, available at 477-6767. So uh, give him a call if you've got any questions or concerns. Uh, what happens when you do uh, tie into the water district, uh, it's similar to having your roads taken over by the town. There's actually a betterment charge for running the lines by your house, and then there's a system connection fee for running the lines to your house, connecting into the system. Uh, there's parts of town where there are water lines, but people haven't connected into those water lines. My, I know one of my ex-relatives that's in that situation, so I wish you'd hook up to the water. Thank you. Um, following up on this conversation about PFAS and about, um, about the wells that have been taken offline, You've mentioned a couple times this recent Boston Globe article that caused a little bit of concern in the public about mm -hmm. whether the water in Mashpee was safe to drink. Um, the enterprise tried to kind of correct the record on that with a follow-up article explaining that it was. But I'm wondering what you think the water commissioners can do in terms of public education to make sure that people understand everything they need to know about the water, the safety regulations from the state. What do you think the, the commission can do there? Well, I mean, the commission puts out an annual report on the quality of the water in our, in our wells. Um, that's distributed at the library and all over town, uh, as well as online. Um, you know, other than walking around and knocking on people's doors, uh, there's, you know, there, there's, we, we, tr we usually work through the newspaper. Actually, I mean, Andy Marks will call the newspaper and tell them what we're doing uh, when something happens like that, as he did for the, uh, uh, the second well that we took off the line. So, um, you know, we have to use the media to get the word out there. We don't have our own, 
you know, direct radio contact to everybody in town. But, uh, you know, the things at the Water District are pretty boring, usually. I mean, you know, it's basically a well-operated system. There's not a lot that goes wrong. This PFAS thing is the first thing in years that's been, you know, anything you might consider a, a problem or an issue in terms of our, our water supply. Um, and, uh, you know, we've dealt with it proactively. and. Um, I'm uh, glad we have the enterprise out there to tell people that we did. <laughs> and, uh, same question to you, Don, about public education. Sure. So, as I mentioned earlier, it's not only in regard to what's going on, but also how to wisely conserve and utilize our resources. And, you know, part of that is utilizing our excellent education system here in Mashpee to make sure that we're starting at ground zero with the kids teaching them how to conserve water, how to turn off the tap if you're not utilizing uh, the water and letting it run while you're brushing uh, your teeth. And this, I know that the water district does some limited uh, things. I saw recently um, a little poster contest um, that was sent home uh, for kids to be able to draw a picture uh, ex demonstrating how to conserve water. But that, that to me is something that can be done on an ongoing basis that helps build everyone's knowledge about what's going on. In regard to um, getting the, the information out there, you know, we live in a very connected world. There are multiple ways for information to be communicated to people. Um, you know, the newspaper is one avenue, social media as we've talked about in other forums is another alternative and so just being kind of out of sight out of mind doesn't prepare you for emergencies and so we need to be um, in have those uh, resources available so that um, we can communicate to people and let them know what's going on so that they don't get worried even if it's um, for the wrong reason thank you I follow up on that? <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, Don didn't mention what those resources are. You know? If there were some more resources out there, we'd use them. Um, in terms of the poster contest, we've been doing that for years. And there's an annual contest. There's a first, second, and third prize winner. And the War District also participates at the science fair that goes on at the uh, Coombs School every year. Or they don't call it the science fair anymore, uh, but it's the, uh, uh, you're the school guy, what do they call it? <laughs> it's, so, well, science Day or whatever, yeah, but I mean, you know, the water district's always there with our uh, our, our exhibits, and uh, so we try to get the kids involved early. Yeah. I'd also add that um, there isn't a water supply problem. There is no limit on how much water we've got. Our, the aquifer that we've got under us is is limitless as far as any potential human needs is. The the big issue has always been keeping it clean. And, you know, that's what I was doing as town planner in, in terms of bylaws, and uh, that's what the water district does, and that's what the land purchases were for, to make sure there was undeveloped land in the watersheds of the, uh, the wells. And so, um, you know, it's not a matter of supply, it's a matter of quality. Right. And unfortunately, unlimited supply without the quality um, doesn't matter how much you have if it's not good. And so uh, yeah a and i guess to the point what those other sources are let's talk about twitter let's talk about facebook let's talk about all of the other social media th forums that are available that people much younger than i r rely upon as their source of information um and for us to kind of put our heads down nothing's wrong let's just keep going i think discounts that growing segment of our population that we really need to be able to reach out to everyone in the town of Mashpee in multiple ways so that they can get all of the information that they need and not rely upon well we put it in the paper my paper may have showed up may not have showed up um, so therefore I didn't know all right, well, thank you. And we're actually going to get to the last question now. So we'll start with you, Tom. Um, what do you think the water district's role should be relative to the wastewater issue? 
Well, actually, when I first ran for the water district, this was actually my idea to have the water district become a water and sewer district. And we get that passed overwhelmingly at town meeting, passed by the legislature, and then at the last minute, the selectmen turned around in terms of their opinion on it. They had originally submitted the legislation, and um, it didn't happen. Uh, now that they've looked at the cost of, uh, of uh, building a sewer system and uh, looked at their finances, they're having second thoughts about it. I know some of them are. and. Uh, maybe coming back to the water district uh, uh, certainly makes more sense than a third separate district that's been mentioned as well. So um, I think it's a wonderful idea. We have an excellent operations manager. Uh, Don and I were talking in the hall before. I mean, all it really takes is one additional person. That's a voice water expert. Actually, our assistant operations manager is a licensed treatment plant operator. So uh, we already have some uh, quality there. And, most of the work gets done by consultants, and then when you get into operations, it's done through contracted operations, as are the dozen treatment plants in town, including the one at the high school. Thank you. And Don? So j just to kind of follow up with what Tom was saying, so back when I was on the board of selectmen um, in the 2000s, we wanted to get the water district um, to take the lead. We spent, um, myself and um, Selectman Culhane, spent a lot of time trying to convince the water district that they should take the lead because of the fact that they had the financial resources through their ability to uh, separately bond outside of um, the, the tax base in order to fund this. And it clearly makes sense from a standpoint of, in most um, s systems, how you measure what comes out is measured by what goes in. And so um, most municipalities utilize the water as a source to be able to determine the sewer charge that would be assessed uh, for the individual properties. That being said, I think that we're still in its infancy, 30 plus years later, um, according to Tom, that, you know, I would have thought we would have been closer to having um, a firm plan. We've vacillated back and forth under new Seabury golf courses to the, um, to the base and their treatment facilities up there and so forth and so on. I'm not 100% convinced that they have a immediate solution um, that is acceptable and can get passed at this point. But I do think that ultimately there will be. And at that point, um, there needs to be a strong assurance that there will be nothing done that will impinge upon this district's being able to continue to provide the excellent water service that it, uh, and product that it provides. Thank you. Can I do everything out of it? Good. Okay. All right, so um, thank you guys for answering those questions, and we'll get to the closing statements now. And Don, do you mind starting, please? Sure. <laughs> so, as I said in my opening remarks, I looked at, for my impression of what's going on in the Water District, the information that was provided um, in the newspaper, the scare that it presented, even though not really justified, and felt that, gee, you know, I never, I don't hear from the water district. Yeah, there's an annual report out there. I went out and looked at it, printed it off. Not a whole lot of information um, in there. Look at the Mashpee um, Town annual report, over, well over 100 pages. Lots of information, lots of what's going on um, in the district. It's important that we have the utmost highest quality uh, water. People have to have a 100% guarantee that the water that they're drinking is, is safe. There can be no questions in regard to that. I do, you know, as we mentioned earlier, while there may be discussion in regard to whether there's unlimited supply, unlimited supply without high quality um, is kind of is pointless. And some of the programs that, you know, the town is doing, uh, particularly with Rick York in regard to cleaning up estuaries, et cetera, 
you know, the efforts that have been made um, to help them with the upcoming, well, potentially uh, that will be made in regard to um, increased monitoring of uh, short-term rentals and, uh, with the Board of Health. All of those things tie in together to help provide an infrastructure to help ensure that we have high quality, clean water. And so it's important for us to continue to be strong champions of that, make sure that people are aware of this, and move to getting the word out there so that people understand what's going on and don't question um, based on something in the Boston Globe or that they read um, errantly on social media, media. We need to be able to control uh, the message. Thank you. Thank you, and I look forward to um, everyone's vote at the upcoming election. Thank you, Don. And Tom, your closing statement? Well, as I said, I've been working for 35 years on making sure that we have a decent water supply and also protecting water quality in the bays. As you know, I'm also the chairman of the Sewer Commission. And we approved, had a plan completed and approved in 2015 that included what Greek York is doing um, as part of the plan. Uh, the utility part of that, um, I again, strongly recommended that that go to the Water and Sewer District. Um, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the Water District. And the Water District provides the highest quality water that anybody could expect. Uh, there's really no story there because there's never been a problem with the quality of the water we put out. So nobody has to worry about it. Um, you know, we've, uh, uh, we've got an excellent staff. We operate proactively in terms of the first sign of any kind of contamination. We take wells off, offline. We get the wells fixed. And, um, you know, I just like to say that, I mean, I'm familiar with, I've been to every single water district facility, every well pump house, every, every water tank. I know the system backwards and forwards. I've been involved with it for 35 years. Um, we've done a good job financially in terms of our uh, fiscal conservancy. And um, I just think that um, we deserve, I deserve to get reelected and, the, and people should uh, be comfortable with what they've got in terms of water district staff and operations and commissioners because uh, um, we're doing a good job and we've proved it. And um, there shouldn't be any question about that. Um, and, um, you know, I just like to ask the, uh, the voters who uh, allow me to continue that work <laughs> for some more years and uh, let me have their vote on the May 21st uh, to continue as Water District Commissioner. Thank you. And that concludes Mashpee TV's 2019 Water District Commissioner Candidates Forum. Thanks again to the candidates for participating tonight. And please let your family and friends know they can watch replays of this forum on Mashpee TV's YouTube channel and on channels 99 and 18 right up to the election day. And don't forget to cast your vote at the Christ the King Parish Hall on election day, which this year is on Tuesday, May 21st. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And with my colleague, Hannah Schuster, I'm Talia Landry, and this is Mashpee TV, and thank you for watching.